why does everybody hate Jalen Hurts? It feels like all the vocal minority is coming out to saying Jalen Hurts runs too much. Jalen Hurts isn't a good quarterback. Jalen Hurts ain't a pocket passer. Jalen Hurts is this. Jalen Hurts is that. Jalen Hurts, you know, it gets old, guys. It's week two. It's getting old. He played well last week. They won. I don't know what you want. You know what tells me? This tells me personally, when you criticize the quarterback, you don't know anything about football. Morning, everybody. Uh, once again, my name is Chef Kerr. Happy Football Friday. And yeah, we're, we're going to have a good one today, folks. Um, so pretty much we're going to preview the NFC East all the week two games. I want to get started, though, for those of you who did watch the game on uh, last night, the Chiefs and the Chargers. Terrific game. Uh, Chargers built a 10 nothing lead. And then the Chiefs rallied back. Um, they, they came back. They won 27-24. To me, it was 27-17 because they, they did kick the field goal with three minutes left to build a 10-point lead. But the Chiefs show, once again, they are the best team in the AFC East, and the AFC East runs through them. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is incredible in the month of September now. 48 touchdowns, three interceptions. Oh, yeah, yeah, the AFC West. Sorry, uh, Tone's <laughs> Tones in my ear already. It, it's early, guys. It's really early. Yeah, the Chiefs own the AFC West. It's the NFC East show, so, you know, it's Friday. What do you want me to do? <laughs> but, um, I, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, 48 touchdowns, three interceptions in the month of September. That's absolutely insane. Patrick Mahomes has 11 wins since the start of 2018 when his team trails by 10 points or more. He's the only player over 500 when his team is down 10 points in a game. He's 11 and 9 when the Chiefs go down 10 points since 2018, including the postseason. I just don't know what to say anymore. Like, the guy's the best quarterback in the NFL. And for people to slander this guy left and right and say, oh, Josh Allen's better. Justin Herbert's better. Aaron Rodgers is better. Tom Brady's better. No, it's Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. I don't want to hear that BS Super Bowl performance. No, he didn't have an offensive line. They, they, they were on third stringers. No. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. He proves it every single week. When you overanalyze Patrick Mahomes, you're just making a fool out of yourself. Just like Eagles fans seem to do with Jalen Hurts these days. You're, you're, you're starting to make a fool out of yourself. Because they just prove you wrong every week. Patrick Mahomes does this every single week. Throws touchdowns. Makes unbelievable plays to keep his team in games. He just had his second consecutive game where he found nine different receivers. So much for the Chiefs are worse about Tyreek Hill, which we all know was BS. We all knew that wasn't the case. If you really pay attention, the Chiefs are deeper. They are deeper this year, and they're better. They're a better football team. Defensively, offensively, they got weapons across the board. Oh, and the greatest head coach in Eagles history, Andy Reid, is their coach. One of the greatest coaches in NFL history. And he's got Patrick Mahomes. So, yeah, right now, you really have to like what the Kansas City Chiefs are, are doing. They're a pretty good football team. They're a very good football team, as a matter of fact. And, look, the AFC West runs through them. They do. They own the division. Patrick Holmes is 21-3 against the division. He owns it. They own it. The Kansas City Chiefs are really good. The Chargers had this team on the ropes. And Justin, uh, not Justin Watson. Um, God, I'm, I'm, I'm losing track of the Watsons already. Um, the seventh round pick. Just unbelievable play. I wanted to touch base with the whole Gerald Everett thing, too. And Rob Ellis is my guest today. We're going to talk about this as well. I saw people criticizing Gerald Everett for essentially giving up. Yeah, when you play nine straight plays in a no-haul offense, you just catch a 31-yard pass in full pads at the highest level. That's not giving up. When you want to get taken out of the game, that's not giving up. You're tired. Brandon Staley should have took his starting tight end out. And, look, Justin Herbert doesn't know that. 
that how beat he is. He's just running the route that's provided. But Gerald Everett just looked gassed on that 99-yard interception return. So Chiefs are really good. Chargers are still really good. But the AFC East, uh, the AFC West runs through the Chiefs. The AFC West runs through the Chiefs. Bottom line. Bottom line. So we got some NFC East games this weekend. Obviously, we got the Giants and the Panthers. I'm really watching Christian McCaffrey in this one. I just think it's inexcusable a guy like Christian McCaffrey gets 14 touches in a football game when he's healthy in week one. And I get it. The, he doesn't play much because he's been hurt. Where it's hamstring, ankle, ACL, whatever. He's been hurt. And he's got a massive contract. But the Panthers have to play this guy more. They have to give him the ball more. It's like the Eagles with Devonta Smith, right? 14 touches is his fewest touches in the game over the past four years. You when a team is struggling to throw the football like the Panthers did last week against Cleveland, you got to give Christian McCaffrey the football to help your quarterback out. And it seems that's a common theme in Carolina, not helping your quarterback out. I don't care if they're good, bad, whatever. Matt Rule and Ben McAdoo do not help quarterbacks. And we're kind of seeing that with Baker Mayfield right now. So Christian McCaffrey needs to get the ball. The Panthers have the longest losing streak in the NFL, eight games. They've had 15 games lost with a one-score result. So if the game's close, you might as well just bet the RD. You might as well just bet the RD. That's the situation they're in right now. Uh, Daniel Jones. It, it was a weird week when, you know, like I said, Kevin Boyler was on yesterday. We kind of talked about his performance. You know, good, not great, but he did complete a career high. 81% of his passes. We talk about... Christian McCaffrey not getting the ball. Saquon Barkley did get the ball. He had 18 carries on Sunday, right? He's only averaged 12.1 over the last two years. Now, Barkley's been hurt, but he only averaged 3.5 yards per carry over the last two years. Dead last in the NFL amongst qualified running backs. You know where it was this year? On Sunday? 9.1 yards per carry. The Giants are getting him the football, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it very much because they need to give him the football to win football games. Saquon Barkley needs the football. The Panthers should take a note from the Giants, which is ironic, to say the least. Um, Kayvon Thibodeau, Jesus Ziari, I, I talk about them a lot. They are limited. They're limited in practice, and we'll see if they come. Look, the Giants were able to get pressure on. Tennessee last week without those two. They're going to be facing an offensive line that may be worse. Is that something to watch? It's going to be interesting. That'll be interesting. That'll be an interesting matchup because I don't like the Panthers offensive line right now, and I don't think they did a good enough job in the draft addressing it. Um, they drafted the key, you call, uh, the, the left tackle, but again, they just did not have that many picks because they made a bonehead move a trade for Sam Darnold. Um, Aaron Robinson's going to be out. That, that was a starting quarterback, by the way. They're, the Giants are really thin at quarterback, so the Panthers will be able to pass the ball on them. Um, I don't know who the left guard's going to be. It might be Ben, ben Brailson again. Their third-round pick, we'll see. There's going to be no limit on Saquon Barkley. I don't know who to go in this one, honestly, because I think the Giants can go 2-0, but I just don't know. Right now, my – Mind saying Carolina, I'd probably stay away from this game, though, if I'm doing the Super Contest, if I'm trying to bet on it. I'd probably stay away from this game. My mind's going Carolina right now. But we'll see, because I think the Giants can easily win this game. Um, A familiar face. We're playing in the NFC East this week. The Commanders play the Lions. Lions played really well against the Eagles last week, and I think the Commanders are a step down from the Eagles. The Lions are favored in this game for the first time in 24 games. They haven't been favored since November of 2020. So it's the first time in Dan Campbell era they've been favored. It's an interesting little storyline there for you. Um, Look, I, I liked 
I was watching the Commanders Jaguars game. Curtis Samuel's in the backfield a little bit, but JD McKissick, that's an interesting look that they're that they're putting out there. Some of the watch. Jonathan Williams has been with Antonio Gibson while Brian Robinson um Robinson heals from the gunshot wounds. He's back in practice this week. So pretty developing story there. The commanders do like to hold the football. They have the football for 32 minutes and 57 seconds on Sunday. So you're going to see a, a lot of short passes from Carson Wentz again, especially against the Lions secondary that particularly isn't good, but you got to watch the big plays. Um, I think they'll be watching a lot of that tape from the Eagles game, what, what the Eagles are able to do. I think Carson Wentz is going to zero in on a guy like Terry McLaurin, but, or maybe a John Dodson, because the Lions couldn't stop A.J. Brown last week. So. What are they going to do when they face just as good of a receiving core in Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel? The only difference is Washington doesn't have a tight end to go to like the Eagles did with Dallas Goddard. So that may equalize it a bit. Um, the Lions were perfect in the red zone last week. They were perfect in the red zone. So that's some of the monitor too, how Washington's red zone defense is. They did allow 123 rushing yards. Yeah, I know DeAndre Smith, Swift's been banged up with an ankle injury. So we'll see there. We'll see there. Um, but, again, Washington allowed 123 rush, rushing yards last week. So maybe Detroit can run the ball. They do have Jamal Williams. So, and they do have a really good offensive line. Uh, I think they got a pound to Antonio Gibson in this game. I, I, I do. I, I, I think Washington does need to. Give the rock to Gibson. Let him do his thing. Just my opinion on this. I I think Washington's going to win. I think they're going to be 2-0. But, again, I like this Detroit team. I do. And if Detroit plays like they did against the Eagles last week, they will win. They will beat them. But I do think Washington's going to win. I think there's going to be enough adjustments made. Dallas and Cincinnati. Yeah. Um... I mean, what a mess. What an absolute mess. Um, I Look, they have a chance because of their defense. Pittsburgh got to them against that O-line seven times. They got to Joe Burrow seven times. They Burrow had a career high five giveaways. The Cowboys led the league in turnovers last year. So, you know, you guys do the math. Cincinnati's offensive line is better talent-wise. But... And here's the but. They didn't show anything on Sunday. Against the Steelers from T.J. Watt and Cameron Hayward. That's the test. And T.J. Watt was out. And Pittsburgh was still able to get pressure on Burrow. Yeah, 15 pressures, four interceptions. It's a good day. I think the Cowboys can generate 15 pressures against the Bengals' offensive line. Here's the difference. Can the offense score 20 points with Cooper Rush? Can they do it one week? I don't know. I'm not sure. I just don't think the Cowboys have the talent offensively to match up with Cincinnati. And I think Cincinnati is a good enough team that they won't start 0-2. I just think that was a tough divisional game. Cincinnati is going now. They have a prove-it game. Teams that go 0-2 don't make the playoffs. Teams that go 0-2 do not make the playoffs. Just bottom line. So... At least last year they didn't. I don't like Dallas' chances in this. I think their defense keeps them in the football game, but I think Joe Burrow makes enough plays to Jamar Chase, to T. Higgins, to Joe Mixon. They may win ugly. It may be like a 23-17 win if Dallas can get 17 points. Maybe we getting Dallas on a lot of credit here. But they don't have an offensive line. They got to rely on Ezekiel Elliott, which... He's bad because his rushing yards per game just keeps dipping, 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 dipping. I don't know. I just, uh, look, I'm just not optimistic about the Cowboys right now. <laughs> I'm not optimistic. I'm just looking at their wide receiver core as we speak. Dennis Houston, really, behind C.D. Lamb. Noah Brown. Michael Gallup's got to play. Michael Gallup's got to play. Yeah, I'm not I'm not optimistic about this game. Um so I'm again Giants Panthers, it's tough. Kinda leading leading Giants, but 
I think Carolina can win. That's a game I'm staying away from. I do think Washington's going to get to 2-0. And, oh, and I think the Giants are, I mean, not the Giants, the Cowboys, I, I think they're going to be owned too. We'll preview Eagles game Monday. Eagles do play Monday. I'm going to get this off my chest quick. Why does everybody hate Jalen Hurts? It feels like all the vocal minority is coming out to saying Jalen Hurts runs too much. Jalen Hurts isn't a good quarterback. Jalen Hurts ain't a pocket passer. Jalen Hurts is this. Jalen Hurts is that. Jalen Hurts, you know, it gets old, guys. It's week two. It's getting old. He played well last week. They won. I don't know what you want. You know what tells me? This tells me personally when you criticize the quarterback, you don't know anything about football. You don't know anything. You're just criticizing the criticize at this point. I mean, the same people who detract Jalen Hurts are the same people who thought Carson Wentz was good. So, I don't know. I'm not saying it's anybody here in the comments section because I don't think it is. But I see it on Twitter, folks. I do see it on Twitter. And it's the same people every single day that want attention. They just want me to put out a stat there that proves them wrong. I guess because they need a sense of accomplishment in their life because Jalen Hurts has had a lot of that. You know, the Eagles have the second best record in football since week 10 of last year? The Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles have the second best record in the NFL since week 10 of last year. That is no joke. A lot of that has to do with the quarterback. And I don't want to hear about the competition. No. You play who's on your schedule and you beat who's on your schedule. And I don't want to hear about that playoff loss to the Bucs because Quez Watkins was your number two. Stop. I don't want to hear it. The Eagles weren't beating that Bucs team last year. Dylan Hurts could have played Patrick Mahomes like. They were not beating the Bucs last year. So just stop with your unrealistic expectations on this quarterback. It gets old. It's week two and it's already getting old. This is why I don't like to talk about Jalen Hurts that much. I just don't. You want to talk about Jalen Hurts, there are other outlets to do that. There are. It drives me insane. You know, please understand the game. Please understand that when you're getting blitzed and you have less than a second to do anything, you go to your natural ability, which is running the football, which he's very good at. You're not going to stay in the pocket and take a hit. You're not going to stay in the pocket and take, you know, a batted ball. You're just not going to do it. You're going to buy time. You're going to create plays. Look at that Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. He does it. Justin Herbert does it. Lamar Jackson does it. Josh Allen does it. Dak Prescott does it. Kirk Cousins even does it. Just please, for once, let the guy grow and develop. He's not even 25 years old yet. I hate to know what. Eagles fans saw Donovan McNabb at 23 years old. Thank God we don't have social media. We didn't have social media then. Thank God. All right, guys. Rob Ellis is in the building. We're going to take a break. Rob Ellis, right after this.